In a special report last night aired on ABC, former anchor Bob Woodruff focused on traumatic brain injury as a serious and widespread problem. On January 29, 2006, while reporting from Iraq, my cameraman Doug Vogt and I were wounded by a roadside bomb. I nearly died. Woodruff was injured by the Iraqi insurgent's weapon of choice, the Improvised Explosive Device, or IED. He praised the treatment he received afterwards. I'm standing here tonight because I got the best military and civilian medical care in the world. But Bob Woodruff said he has learned that all veterans with traumatic brain injury, or TBI, may not be receiving that same level of care at many of the veterans' hospitals around the country. TBI is new, and the VA hospitals know nothing about it. The veterans said, and their families I spoke to said the VA isn't fully prepared to care for brain-injured veterans once they return home. Brain injuries is a part-time job for them. Uh, you know, I, I had no idea what we were walking into, that it was going to be so minimal. The exact number of veterans with traumatic brain injury is difficult to pin down. Several estimates found that between 10 to 20 percent of the one and a half million veterans returning from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan suffer a traumatic brain injury. Other estimates put that number even higher. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs disputes those estimates. In his report, Bob Woodruff asked the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Jim Nicholson, about the discrepancy between the 23,000 wounded listed by the Department of Defense and larger numbers found in a VA document. So I think Americans are always very surprised to know the number of uh, amputations, for example, which is fewer than 600 in total. Uh, they're probably also surprised to know that, uh, you know, 200,000 uh, come to the VA uh, for some kind of medical treatment. That's probably more than they think. You've got uh, mental disorders, 73,000, diseases of nervous system, 61,000. These are well, huge numbers beyond the 23,000. A lot of them come in for, for dental problems. Uh, uh, others come in for a lot of the, you know, the normal uh, things that people people have. We're, we're providing their, their health care. Some, I suppose, are because of their service over there, but they weren't evacuated for that. Bob Woodruff's report came a week after problems were brought to light at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C. A Washington Post report details substandard conditions and questionable outpatient care. And just to clarify, I am not related to Bob Woodruff. For more now on diagnosing and treating traumatic brain injuries, we get two separate views. In a moment, we will hear from the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. But first, we turn to Paul Rykoff. He's an Army National Guard lieutenant who led a platoon in Iraq in 2003 to 2004. He's now Executive Director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, an organization that advocates on behalf of troops who are still serving. Paul Rykoff, welcome. We have said that it's hard to get the exact numbers of soldiers and Marines with traumatic brain injury. Why is it so hard? Well, it's very difficult right now because the VA, until I think yesterday, uh, has not been screening for traumatic brain injury. And most importantly, the Department of Defense is not screening for traumatic brain injury. So people coming back from Iraq, anyone who's been in the vicinity of a blast or a roadside bomb is at risk for traumatic brain injury. And unless we screen all of them coming home, we'll really have no accurate projections about how many people are affected. We know that the VA has seen a few thousand already, uh, but we have no, no idea how many other folks are roaming the streets of America right now with memory problems, with potential brain damage that haven't even been diagnosed. And I think the thing that concerns me most is Secretary Nicholson's tone. He doesn't seem to appreciate the magnitude of what these veterans are facing. We're talking about debilitating lifelong injuries. Uh, one of the soldiers profiled last night, uh, his wife talked about the substandard sh care she got when she got down to the localized VAs. The local VAs are not ready for traumatic brain injury. And I think that's what the blockbuster piece from uh, Bob Woodruff and ABC revealed last night. Are you say, let me just step back. Are you saying that the, the Defense Department wasn't prepared for these injuries, the Veterans Affairs Department was not prepared for these injuries, and the number of injuries? Yes, I'm saying that our country in general is unprepared. The Department of Defense, the, the, the Department of VA, they're all unprepared 
for the over 1.6 million veterans who've been through Iraq and Afghanistan are going to be coming home with injuries. Traumatic brain injury, one in three returning veterans will face post-traumatic stress disorder or other mental health issues. We've got a flood of people coming home, and the president's new budget actually proposes cuts to the VA budget for 2009 and 2010. There are caps after that. They're introducing co-pays and trying to double the prescription costs for veterans. They're actually cutting prosthetics research in the future. And in a time of war, this is really unconscionable, and it shows that the administration and the VA is right now uh, unable in, in to accurately project for future demand or meet the demand we have right now. Well, I, I just want to put out one number out there. Today, we were told by the Secretary of Veterans Affairs Office, 319 uh, veterans have, have been diagnosed with post-traumatic, I'm sorry, with, with traumatic uh, brain injury. There's a number. I'm sorry. They, they're, they're, they said how many? 319. I think that number treated. is is extremely conservative. That may be the number they've treated so far, but I think that that's really the tip of the iceberg. And, and I think we have the larger question about whether or not you know, resources have been allocated, whether or not the VA is understanding the magnitude and the scope of what's facing our veterans coming home. And you, you saw Secretary Nicholson last night. He said, well, some of them come in for dental work. This is not dental work. This is amputations, traumatic brain injury. These are serious wounds. And these folks aren't getting the care that they need at Walter Reed, right in the backyard of the Capitol, or in the localized VAs. And I think what America is finally starting to understand is that this is a serious problem. It's a growing problem. And we've only started to scratch the surface with these recent reports from ABC and the Washington Post and others. Paul Rykoff, what are you, what are you saying needs to happen? Is this, a, is this a matter of more money? I mean, you mentioned that the Bush administration, the president's new budget is proposing cuts. Of course, Congress is part of that decision-making process, too. What are you saying needs to happen? Well, I, I think it's a combination. I mean, it could start with oversight. Of the money allocated to the VA for mental health last year, according to a recent GAO report, only about 50% of it actually got down to the local VAs. So we need to ask some very tough questions. We need to investigate where the existing money is going and why it's not getting down to those local VAs. But I think in general, we are short of where we need to be. Uh, the independent budget, which is put together by uh, leading veterans organizations and mental care workers, uh, project that we're billions of dollars short of where we need to be to meet existing demand and to project for future demand. Uh, so we really need a newfound urgency in this country to understand that veterans' issues need to be a priority. Uh, the president in his State of the Union address recently talked about the tens of thousands of troops that were going to surge into Baghdad, but he didn't talk at all about how we're going to care for them when they come home. And we need that type of presidential attention to these yeah. issues every day of the year. You serve in the military. You are still in the Army National Guard. You talk to people in the military and veterans' uh, offices all the time. It, it, what are you saying? I mean, are you saying they don't care? What are, no, what are you I, suggesting? I, I think there are a lot of people who work very hard and care very deeply in Walter Reed and also in the VA hospitals around the country. But what we consistently hear is that they're under-resourced. And it seems as though the Secretary Nicholson really doesn't have his ear to the ground. He doesn't seem to be getting down to the lowest level to talk to the families that you saw profiled in the ABC piece. He's not getting down to the vet centers, the local PTSD and mental health outreach centers that are crying for additional resources, that are saying they're coming close to being overwhelmed. He's not listening to the veterans that we talk to that talk about increased wait times. And he's not addressing the fact that right now there are tens of thousands of claims that are backlogged at the VA waiting to be addressed. It's clear to everyone that the resources aren't there. And we need to address them immediately and we need to talk about how we're going to fix them in the future. To be realistic, Paul Rykoff, we are talking about a lifetime of care for many of these returning soldiers and Marines with traumatic brain injury. Absolutely. Uh, a soldier like the one profiled last night who was shot in the head is going to require a lifetime of care and treatment. It's going to be expensive. But when this soldier raised his right hand and promised to defend our country overseas, he assumed that the care was going to be there when he got home. And his family assumed that that care was going to be there when, they got, when he got home. I assumed that that care would be there. And the reality is that right now, uh, America is not holding up their end of the bargain to our heroes. And when they come home, they deserve whatever care they need uh, to try to make them whole again and, and that would properly honor the service that they've given. All right, Paul Rykoff uh, joining us. Uh, he is the head, the executive director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am.